We are a free country and we are guided by the provisions in the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Even though it's going to be amended actually or it's going to be replaced by a newer constitution, perhaps most of its essential parts are still going to stand. This is the Knowledge Catalog and we are going to discuss the 1987 Philippine Constitution on Education in the Philippines, which is the topic under the Social Studies. If you want to have a copy of this presentation, you may contact me through my page. It's on facebook.com forward slash knowledge catalog forward slash. Let's begin. This is a particular lesson you need to learn for professional development and ethics for teachers. The teacher as a professional in the 1987 Philippine Constitution. So basically, we're just going to have a quick talk about the connection of the 1987 Philippine Constitution to making the teaching profession a professional endeavor indeed. The 1987 Philippine Constitution, particularly in Article 14, which is entitled Education, Science and Technology, Arts, Culture and Sports, has the following provision in Section 5E. The state shall enhance the right of teachers to professional advancement. Non-teaching and non-academic personnel shall enjoy the protection of the state. So there is this explicit discussion on the teachers in the actual Philippine Constitution. It continues with 5F. The state shall assign the highest budgetary priority to education and ensure that teaching will attract and retain its rightful share of the best available talents through adequate remuneration and other means of job satisfaction and fulfillment. Well, this is quite a long provision, but um, we can divide it into two. The first part is the allocation of the highest budgetary priority to education, which holds through every year. Every time the budget for the next uh, fiscal year is going to be, you know, uh, passed into law, usually the Department of Education and other affiliated education uh, bodies and agencies in our government are going to have the total, the biggest total budgetary allocation. It is also true that uh, teachers are being given the, you know, the, the, uh, one of the highest consideration when it comes to professional development and the benefits of uh, teaching in the public school are often seen by the common people as um, perhaps for some more than enough. So that is still up for the I mean up for debate because uh, we we are having a change a changing society. The demands of our society are changing. The supply are also changing. Also, the uh, cost of living is also changing. They're all changing. So let's begin first with the first uh, I know, part of section 5 that we discussed a while ago, or we read a while ago, that the state shall enhance the right of teachers to professional development. The Commission on Higher Education defines a center of excellence as uh, a private or a public institution. It can be a college, institute, or school, or agency that must be engaged in pre-service and continuing education. It can be formal or non-formal and of teachers of top and top-notch educators. That is a center of excellence according to RA. Uh, Republic Act Number 7784, which is an act to strengthen teacher education in the Philippines by establishing different centers of excellence. Centers of excellence are established and they continue to maintain good record in teacher education in terms of the number of graduates. They must have a sufficient number of graduates to the demands of the uh, education, the current demands of the education. Also, in terms of performance in the government examination for teachers, and in this case, the licensure examination for teachers that is uh, spearheaded by the Professional Regulation Commission. And uh, their professional achievement, research and community service, uh, service, which includes authorship and some social responsibility, uh, things that they're doing for charity are all 
uh, and are all being uh, considered uh, for the establishment of different centers of excellence, especially for teacher education. These centers may exist by themselves, so they can be independent centers of excellence for teacher education, but they can also be within a university or a college um, of, a, of a college, so, or a college. Um, yeah, different accrediting agencies are doing, uh, are, are performing these kinds of functions, accrediting whether or not a particular teacher education program is top-notch. So, yeah, that is also one of the factors for the establishment of a particular center of excellence within a university. The Philippine Normal University uh, is a highly educated, professionally qualified, and experienced faculty. Uh, it has the following highly educated, professionally qualified, and experienced, fa experienced faculty dedicated to the philosophy, mission, vision, and goals of the institution and education. Um, it has well-settled students. It's a center of excellence for teacher education. It, it has an adequate library, research, and study facilities. It has competent administrative and support staff. It also has well-planned and relevant instructional programs. It has adequate student development programs. It has adequate student services. It has relevant extension service and outreach. Um, and I would like to go back to all of these characteristics of the Philippine Normal University and perhaps go back to my uh, previous, uh, no, pro to my uh, previous, uh, no, actually it is, still is my current university, Pampanga State Agricultural University. If I'm not mistaken, it is one of the, Pampanga State Agricultural University is one of the few um, universities or state universities in the area that are offering teacher education which is of uh, top-notch quality and is accredited highly by, if I'm not mistaken, uh, AACOP, accrediting agency of, uh, yeah, basta AACOP yeah, <laughs> And right, so, um, okay, first is, is it, it, does it have a highly educated, professionally qualified and experienced faculty? Um, highly educated, that is, of course, not a question because uh, it must be, for a center of excellence, to become a center of excellence, it must have a uh, faculty that is comprised of perhaps master's or doctor's uh, degree uh, holders. Yung mga ganong klaseng uh, uh, professors na dapat yung mga nandun. Also, uh, by saying professionally qualified, they must have uh, license, uh, let, uh, you know, uh, they must have taken the licensure examination for teachers and kailangan na pasan nila for that to, for them to have a license. Um, one of the biggest, uh, siguro, the biggest ironies of, uh, most teacher education or pre-service, uh, teacher education institutions is that most of their professors, if not some of them, don't even have a license to teach. You know, uh, they don't even have uh, that license on uh, tinatrain nila yung mga estudyante nila to get after, you know, after undergraduate education. But, you know, PSAU has most of its faculty with licenses. And they, al they are also experienced because uh, there are some of them who have been in um, higher education, higher teacher education for quite a long while already. <clears throat> the set, the students are also well settled because uh, the campuses must be um, conducive to learning. Um, it is spacious. PSAU is very spacious and it uh, it has different facilities in it. So students can, can actually just uh, stay in school and not be bored because there are so many uh, opportunities and different uh, organizations with which, with which they can join and grow. Uh, Philippine Normal University or PNU is boasting for adequate library, research, and study facilities, same for PSAU. However, I guess the research uh, function or the facilities of the university must be uh, improved in a way that its um, collection, rich collection of uh, research articles or research books must be available to most people. 
or at least a couple of people in the university. Next is competent administrative and support staff. Um, most of most of the personnel in the registrar, in the accounting, and in the cashier offices must be uh, higher and uh, must have uh, higher levels of employment. Kailangan yung mga, yung mga yun din, they must be also promoted. Kailangan meron silang career path. They must have well-planned and relevant instructional programs. Um, the prospectus or the collection of the um, subjects that must be that are going to be offered and included in the training of pre-service teachers must be relevant to the actual needs to the actual demands of the Philippine education system. Kailangan din mayroong uh, sapat na student development programs. Uh, one of the basics of student development programs are student, student publications, student leadership. Uh, those two must always be present. And in the case of uh, Philippine Normal University, they have those and even for PSIU. They must have adequate student services. By saying student services, I am not sure what we mean here, but um, speaking, I mean, from my experience, um, perhaps the facilities that are not really there, I mean, uh, connected to uh, instructions such as dormitories, the availability of canteens, uh, comfort rooms even, the student commons, student common rooms or common halls, they must be available. Um, relevant extension service and outreach. Um, we have already talked about research, uh, which is uh, one of the, you know, one of the major, um, they, how they're called, because for any university, they always have these uh, major aspects in them that they need to develop. They have R, which is for research. We, they have uh, D, which is for development. So usually research and development are found um, as one. Okay, R&D, research and development. Then they must also have outreach and training. Yeah, R dot. So uh, for extension and outreach, um, it means that the universities uh, that are, you know, Centers for Excellence for Teacher Education must be able to um, reach community partners and even uh, provide some kind of assistance to the community in any way possible. Community partners can be schools or it can also be offices that are related to schools. And, um, those are outreach uh, activities if they are going to partner with these um, community partners. <laughs> partners. Okay, uh, the PD 223 or 223, the Presidential Decree Number 223, created the Professional Regulation Commission or the BRC. Its major aim is or its major mission statement is to administer, implement, and enforce the regulatory policies of the national government with respect to the regulations and licensing of the various professions, including teaching and occupations, under its jurisdiction including the maintenance of professional and occupational standards, as well as ethics, and the enforcement of the rules and regulations relative thereto. And if I hope I made it obvious that this was signed by the former President Ferdinand Marcus. Um, but as of writing of this presentation, the chairperson for the Board of Professional Teachers was Dr. Rosita L. Navarro. The Teachers Professionalization Act of 1994 uh, has created the Board for Professional Teachers or BPT, which is a collegial body under the supervision and administrative control of the BRC. It is an act to strengthen the regulation and supervision of the practice of teaching in the Philippines and prescribing a licensure examination for teachers and for other purposes. This one, this act, Teachers Professionalization Act uh, of 1994 is the, fun, is the foundation, the very foundation of the licensure examination for teachers. The licensure examination for teachers is divided into three. Uh, well, uh, for secondary, it is divided into three. Okay, that is uh, how I correct it. Um, it is divided into the following professional education, uh, major or the area of specialization, and then uh, general education. If I'm not mistaken for elementary teachers, uh, for them to get their um, 
licenses, they are only required to answer the uh, professional education and the general education uh, areas of the licensure examination for that particular cycle. Usually, it happens twice a year, once in March and then once in September. The next one is uh, the continuation of the licensure examination for teachers. The license expires. After a couple of years, it actually changes. I'm not sure how many years it's now, but from the last time I checked, it's, uh, if I'm mistaken, three years? I am not sure. But it expires. And before, um, once the license expires, um, the teacher must just, uh, know, just go to PRC and renew it. But now, uh, the Continuing Professional Development or CPD Act of 2016, which is otherwise known as RA 10912, has the po- following uh, provisions for the professionalization of teachers regulating their practice in the Philippines, which was the PD 1006 in January 1997. So this is how it's now regulated. Um, say, uh, if the data, if the year of renewal was in December 2017, uh, which was actually many years ago, kailangan si teacher meron na siyang na-earn na credit units of 15. And if it was, uh, in January to December 2018, it must, uh, the teacher must have had 30 credit units. And in January 2019 onwards, that must, ha- the teacher must have 45, uh, credit units. As of now, which is uh, September 2020, the latest on this is is still quite ambiguous because different uh, changes have already been made. Halimbawa, in, earlier this year in 2020, ang require na lang ng PRC is 15 credit units, and the, those 15 credit units can be given by the school. The school can give the teachers uh, na under sa kanya professional development training um, that are equivalent to credit units. Some of them, such as the Brigada Escuela uh, Certificate, is now equivalent to 15 credit units. So what does that say? From the previous aim of the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016, na ibalik ang mga teachers into studies or as or require them to continue their professional development through authorship, through attending seminars and different trainings, now, a simple Brigada Escuela certificate is going to answer for all of that. Perhaps it's, it is, perhaps it's also caused by the pandemic that we are experiencing right now, but those are the changes that happened in the continuing professional development for teachers. We now move on to Section 5E, which is the non-teaching and non-academic personnel shall enjoy the protection of the state. How are they protected? Officers and employees of all departments and agencies except those covered by special laws shall render not less than eight hours or eight hours, of course, of work for five days, making up 40 hours a week. That excludes the time for lunch. A, kit- a continuous eight hours may actually mean today as uh, six hours of teaching and two hours of uh, doing some, you know, um, off classroom work such as checking papers, updating class records, and preparing for lessons. This is according to the section, the, the section five, rule number seventeen of the Omnibus Rules Implementing Title Number One, Subtitle A, Book Five of the. Administrative Code of 1987. This promulgates okay, the Civil Service Commission Memorandum Circular Number 16, Series of 2010, promulgates the guidelines on under time, which mentions that under time is not classified as tardiness. So the teacher, usually teachers that have committed uh what, wait, um, five consecutive lates are being given, or three consecutive late time in Sumaganan. They are all ten given an equivalence of one absence. And in this, um, if the teacher has had under time, 
uh, it says na hindi siya dapat mabigyan ng uh, tardiness mark because, you know, that is a ground for giving equivalent uh, absence. Section 5F naman ensure that teaching will attract and retain its rightful share of the best available talents. Some say that, uh, some say before that if you don't qualify for any profession, that means, uh, that is actually, that's to say, if you are not smart enough, if you're not talented enough uh, to be qualified as a doctor or, or as a lawyer, then mag-teacher ka na lang. Um, that lang, which is implying that teaching is not such a difficult job that, you know, even the worst of us can actually do it. Is the total con is the total uh, opposite opposite of this of this section of this uh, declaration in the section. It says that teachers must be the best people, and that the best talents are found among teachers. The adcom or the uh, commission or the uh, no, education commission that is its short term the adcom report of 1991 which stands as the even actually today the uh, foundation of the teaching um, and teaching and learning process up until today is uh, you know this one the Congressional Commission to Review and Access Philippine Education or adcom has stated that the quality of teachers is actually declining due to the following reasons. The first reason is that teachers are poorly trained. They lack, actually, I must say that they, do, they don't lack training. They do not lack seminars. What they lack are relevant trainings, are relevant seminars, those that are actually based from a needs assessment and not just from random, you know, thoughts from the higher-ups. And next one is enrollees to teacher training are low-quality students. My university, I mean, the, the university I am in is actually uh, doing, or I mean, measures to avoid this by uh, giving admission policies or by implementing admission policies. In PSAU, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, a student who graduated with a failing mark in any of their important subjects, such as English, Science, Mathematics, and Filipino, are not going to be qualified in the teacher education uh, curriculum. So yeah, they are not going to be qualified to even train to teach. Teaching is perceived as a poorly esteemed profession. Ayun. Um, Yun nga, our social, ano, the social definition for teaching in the Philippines is just like that. Uh, mag-teacher ka na lang because, you know, that is what you can do. And apart from that, teaching has the lowest, one of the lowest, ano, compared to other professions, it has one of the lowest uh, compensation. Section 5, 5F, which is adequate remuneration and other means of job satisfaction and fulfillment. When it comes to this, we are going to, uh, of course, talk about House Bill Number 5731, which is an act increasing the minimum salary of public school teachers and non-teaching personnel in all elementary and secondary schools by upgrading their salary grade level from salary grade 11 to salary grade 18 and salary grade 1 to salary grade 9, respectively, and appropriating funds thereof. The salary of teachers is not something that can be changed over a period of months. Again, it can't be changed over a period of months. By the time the national budget for education is uh, made, or the national budget actually for uh, a particular fiscal year is made, the appropriation for the salary of teachers is already fixed. Ibig sabihin nun, tapos na, na appropriate na dapat yung sahod ng mga teachers for the entire year. Hindi siya pwedeng mapalitan. Um, but 
of course, um, this aim of the House Bill 5731 of, uh, you know, promoting the teachers in terms of their salary is not something that is uh, doable in only a matter of uh, one year or two years. So what we are having or experiencing right now is napapromote or nagkakaroon ng tranches. Okay? That is how salary grade 11 is going to reach salary grade 18. It is through tranches. Hindi siya isahang bagsak. Also, uh, included din sa salary standardization law, yung uh, step increments ng mga teachers because we have that in our Magna Carta. So, yeah. I hope that this talk on the professional development and ethics for teachers, particularly on the teacher as a professional and the role being played by the 1987 Philippine Constitution is clear as water. And I hope that if you are a pre, I mean, if you are a senior high school student who just happened to come across this uh, video, you find the profession as a challenging one, especially in the advent of the new normal education and with the increasing demands for uh, that is being put on the teachers, on the shoulders of the teachers. I hope that your continued support to this uh, to this kind of content is going to leave something tangible, such as a like or a constructive comment. If you want to uh, continue uh, being updated with this with the content with content coming from this page uh, or from this channel, uh, don't forget to just subscribe. The Knowledge Catalog is a brand being developed by yours truly. I am a creator and I am a high school teacher in the Philippines. I love developing content that will that is going to be use, useful, okay, that I don't find just useful, it's going to be useful and needed to better my instruction. See you in the next video.